You all know him. He was uh, one of the guys that was just up there. This is uh, Dylan Croson's group. <laughs> Give me one sec to set up. Okay, so I noticed uh, from the past few weeks that we have a problem in this church and in all churches. We, I specifically this youth group, I've noticed that we are at a point. We're at a really good point. We're getting, we're getting where we need to be. But we're we're one step away. We are a little bit off. We just need to take it a tiny bit further. You see, I've I've heard Wes talk about the um, the revival. I've heard him talk about a revival and him saying that one's coming soon. I've heard other people say the same thing. I personally am not very good at finding out what the Spirit's leading, but even I've noticed, so it doesn't have to be pretty close. Um, and the what, what I've noticed is we're at a point where we see everything we're doing. We notice when we're doing something wrong, we see what we're doing right, and we know what we need to do right. But we're being held back. We're not, we're not moving on to what we need to do because we don't feel worthy. It says in Romans 3.23 that all have fallen short of the glory of God. So you don't, I mean, you're not going to be perfect. Don't wait until you are perfect to start doing what God has for you to do in your life. You're not going to get there. You will be waiting for that for the rest of your life. Yeah. You will never get to that point. But when you, I mean, pastors, pastors mess up. You can have, as he said a couple times, he's not perfect. You're not going to get perfect. Don't wait until you are perfect to start your ministry. If you know what God has in store for you, start it. There's, I, I have a little example. There's, the Holy Spirit is called fire, called fire in the Bible. It said that you'll be baptized in fire when it's referring to the Holy Spirit. So, I mean, how, how many of you have been camping? Or have seen camp cartoons? Because you'll probably get it from that, too. When you go camping and you have a fire... So you have the campfire, they have this pit dug, and usually they have rocks surrounding the pit. That way, whenever you put a fire in there, it's not going to spread and catch the entire forest on fire, right? So let's imagine, just for a second, that that fire is the Holy Spirit, and that pit is you. All the rocks around it is your sin preventing you from moving on. But we've gotten past that point. We're not stuck with our sin. We've, we understand when we've sinned, and we've repented when we've sinned. But the problem is, once God takes up those stones, after we've repented and we've asked forgiveness, He picks up those stones. But under those stones is left dead stuff. It's not alive, it's dirt. Dirt can't catch on fire. <laughs> Nothing can grow under a rock, so there's just dirt there. So the fire can't spread. What we need to do, and the step that we need to move on to, the next step that will I believe it is a step that will start the revival. I believe we are one step before the revival. And once we get past this last thing, it's going to be the revival. Next step is to start the revival. And what that is, what we need to do, is we need to stop worrying about that dirt. You get rid of your sin, you repent, you move on. Don't dwell over it. Don't look in the past. Don't. You have death in your past, okay? It happens. Everybody does. Don't dwell on the past and look at the past. Don't be compelled by the death in your past. Yeah. But instead, be compelled by the joy that was put before you. Yeah. Jesus endured the cross for the joy that was put before him. The joy that is put before us is heaven. The joy more recent, more close, it's 
right in our grasp is a revival, being extremely close to God and an explosion of the Holy Spirit. And all we have to do is we have to stop worrying about that dirt spot, that spot that isn't growing, that spot that was under the rock. The rock may come back down, but stop worrying about it so that God can deal with it and He will allow it to bear fruit. Yeah. Whenever it starts growing and it bears fruit, then the fire can spread and then you've got a wildfire on your hands. Yeah. And guess what that is? That's a revival. Yeah. That is what we're going for. That's what we're one step away from. All we have to do is stop dwelling on what was and start looking to what will be. If you keep focusing on what was, it won't happen. We'll all stay here, we'll come to Impact, and we'll pray, and we'll get in the altar, and it'll be all good fun, you might make that. But, if we forget what we've done, we repent, leave it alone after we get done with it, and move on, start your ministry, then the revival will happen, and we will explode with the Holy Spirit. You'll be walking, I mean, Wes has talked several, told us several times about walking through a street or walking through school and everybody seeing there's something different about you yeah. and just by walking past that's when that's going to happen when you stop worrying about what was and start worrying about what will be yeah. Amen. there's another little piece to it if I can remember it there, okay so you have to forget that. You have to move on. Get forward. Start your ministry, okay? Don't, I mean, you have a ministry. I'm guessing you, God has probably dealt with you, and you have an idea of what you're doing. I wouldn't be up here if I didn't have an idea of what I was doing. The only reason I'm up here speaking tonight is because I've realized what I'm telling you right now. But, so stop worrying about that. And you're teenagers, okay? You're teenagers. Jeremiah, he was a little, I mean, he wasn't very old either. He was worried that, you know, people wouldn't listen to him when God told him to go and, you know, to be his prophet and go and speak to the masses for him. God told him to do that, but his response was that he didn't think anyone would listen because he was just a kid. He was afraid that it wouldn't have any effect because he was a kid. But you're, you may be kids, but God's response to that was, so what if you're a kid? I will give you the words to say. I will... I will help you and give you what you need and tell you what to say so that everyone will follow you regardless of your age. Your age isn't what matters. Your age won't hold you back. Your sin isn't holding you back anymore. The only thing that's still holding you back is dwelling on your sin and not knowing that you should start right now. There's no reason to wait any longer. You're all perfectly capable of starting whatever you need to do. I'm, I'm going off a little bit on a limb. I haven't heard anybody say this yet. But this, the ministry that we're starting with the fine arts, it's, that's, it's not all about fine arts. Fine arts is our excuse to start the ministry. Amen. The ministry is teenagers moving on and starting to do their ministry, starting to live in what God told them to do Amen. and what God would have them to do, to spread the word and to teach the gospel. We're going to do it in several different ways. There are different... Anointings, there are different skills that you have and different ways that God would have you to yeah. spread the gospel. And we're each doing that in our way. I mean, we've talked about in the future, after, after we get done with fine arts, working on some of the things that we're doing for fine arts, getting it better, expanding, getting more people, because we don't have a limited amount of people anymore, and going to the streets, going to a parking lot, yeah. and starting a ministry. Get, go to a parking lot, get a radio, and some people and just preaching and doing human videos and dances and all that yeah. there's you you don't have any excuse now there's a ministry for you to join into later and we're not quite ready for that yet we have to finish the fine art stuff but there's a ministry there's something that you can join and you can get involved in to start following what God would have you to do even at your age yeah. you've you've gotten to the point where you see when you sin and you repent when you repent, God takes it away. So there's no reason. He throws it as far as the east is from the west. I, I can't figure out how far away that is because the earth is a circle. But no, I'm guessing it's pretty far. So dude, your sin isn't your problem anymore. You don't have that to worry about. 
All you have to do to start the revival and to start your ministry is death. First, stop worrying about the death in your past. Stop being compelled by the death in your past, but be compelled by the love in your future. Be compelled to do the things that you'll be able to in your future and that you can do in your future. Your very close future. 